Christine, uh, thank you for joining me today at Pop Culture Unplugged. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's exciting times. I, I listened to our interview from last time. It was about two years ago, and you've been busy since, since then, too. You've been just grinding away, grinding away. You haven't stopped. You know, I don't stop. <laughs> I just, I'm someone who, like, can't not be busy. I, I always got my hands on something, doing something. And after this last year you know, with the strike and everything, I've just been like dredging up old projects, trying to stoke fires, you know, get get stuff going. Yeah. What's the goal? Are you, do you still want to like behind the scenes or do you eventually you want to come back on screen? What do you think? You know, I really love directing. Um, I think because it's a little newer to me. And so I'm itching to do that again. But I never say no to acting. It was my first yeah. love. I would I I would always be happy to get in front of a camera and do a little something. Um, so it, I never say never. No, I'm open to both, you know, whatever kind of comes my way, I suppose. <laughs> there you go. So uh, congrats on the podcast, by the way. We're episode two today dropped a little while episode ago. Episode two. Yeah. yeah Keenan yeah. and Lakin give you deja vu. Exciting times. Well, what I remember we we talked about this about two years ago. You mentioned that you were thinking about doing it. And you finally did it after two years. Yeah. Well, listen, it's difficult because so Stacy came to me. This is a podcast. It's if you don't know, it's hosted by myself and Stacy Keenan. It's a step by step rewatch podcast. But the unique thing about it is Stacy's never seen the show. So she is watching the show for the very first time. She never watched one episode of Step by Step. I watched every single episode because I was like a super fan. I was 12 when I got on the show and I was just like so into TGIF. So it was like my life. So she approached me and said, hey, I thought this might be really fun. Is this something that would interest you? And I said, with you? And I get to just like have more of an appointment to hang out with you more? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it would be fun because we have very different takes on our memories. So, but between, you know, she has a job, she's a lawyer, and then I was transitioning to directing. So I, we were both just busy at different times. And so it took a minute to wrangle it together. And then when we finally got around to recording it, we made appointments to do that. And, and then it sort of stalemated as we sort of, we had all this content we thought, now what, now what do we do with it? We need an editor, we need a person, we need someone to help. And it really, it really started to come together when I had lunch with my old buddy, Stephen Ray Morris. Um, who I just love. He's a, an amazing podcast producer, very prolific, and just a really nice person. And I sort of mentioned it to him and his eyes lit up and we all got together and it was just kind of gravy from there. But it took it took kind of the right combination of people, I think. And I, and I believe this is the second TGIF podcast to drop because now we have uh, Pod Meets World for Boy Meets World and now we have you. That's right. I, I mean, yeah, I when think, is Perfect Strangers going to get back together? I don't <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one to do. I rewatched the series again of that one. That would be a great one to do. Yeah. Well, and Jody's got um, how rude Tannerinos. And That's that was, right. Yep. So you know, we're we're we just we need a Family Matters. We need a Hanging with Mr. Cooper, and we need a we need a Perfect Stranger. So somebody get on that. There you go. <laughs> uh, from a, from your perspective now, like, what are you hoping the listeners get out of each episode when they tune in every week to listen? Well, I think a lot of people, if you're rewatching the show now as an adult, or maybe you're watching with your kids um, because you already watched it and now you're you know, mm -hmm. finding new content to watch with your kids, I think there's a real nostalgia to it. Um, the other part of it is these are a lot of the things we talk about and a lot of the behind the scenes things that we remember are stories we've never told before. We know them. We remember them. But we've never had a platform to really talk about what it was like and what people were really like, and like the nuances of what the day-to-day -day was like, or I remember this episode, I remember the storyline, or, um, so I think it's a lot of that. It's also, she and I talk a lot about what it was like to grow up in the 90s before social media. So a lot right. of the pictures and the BTS that we share are things no one's ever seen because they're all pictures. They were never posted anywhere. Like I have a box of photos that I'm going through every week and like pulling stuff out and marveling at the amount of pictures my mother took thank god she captured all of this so it was just a much simpler time i think and it was a very unique experience ex sharing that with somebody in a very similar way um you know growing up on television but yet going back to a real school and being just a regular kid and going through kids that regular kids go go through but somehow also kind of in the limelight so it was weird, you know, and I think we both sort of speak on that with uh, a bit of perspective now. Now, are you rewatching 
each episode too right before you're about to record or do you like remember everything <laughs> no my memory's not that good um <laughs> i am re-watching them right before we record okay. um and we take turns kind of recapping and the funny thing is sometimes i remember an episode really well like if it okay. was like the episode that dropped today was with julia white and i remember that one really well but that was also a very core memory for my 12 year old brain getting mm. getting to do an episode and getting to act with Urkel, you know, I was such a fan. So I remember a lot of the nuance of that week. Um, other episodes, not so much, probably because I wasn't, I didn't have a, as much of a critical role in the storyline. And I was probably out at the school, you know, the school trailer with the other kids and goofing off and that kind of a thing. So it's, it's funny to remember though, because sometimes I, I can remember the punchline before the person says it. Um, and I'm also starting to watch uh, some of the episodes with my kids who are pretty shady. I mean, they have a lot of opinions. They're like the two <laughs> old men in, um, you know, the Muppets. They like to sit there and just comment and be like negative about things and that there's too much kissing and like why those two people keep kissing and, right. you know, so they, they haven't, they haven't fully appreciated the genius that is step by step yet. It's okay. How, how many episodes have you recorded so far? We recorded 22 for the wow. first season. Yeah. So we recorded all of them for the first season already. Um, and I think the other part of that was we just, we were getting into a groove and we wanted to see how it felt and we wanted to listen back and see what we could improve on and what we could change and if we liked the format and, you know, stuff like that. So, so far so good. I definitely think in season two, we'd like to have more guests on because it's just been the two of us. And yeah. depending on where we record season two, maybe we'll do some more video components because we didn't take any video during. This was just solely um, just us just recording. But the difference is too, like some people do their podcast over Zoom. We actually got in, in person to do ours, which I think wow. is, I think it lends to a little bit of a different energy in the room personally. Are you planning to drop the, like those, like, did you record any video doing the, no, uh, so you got this season two and drop it on YouTube too. Yeah, there might be. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. There you go. So like diving through these 22 episodes so far that you've done, uh, did it bring up back any like any certain memories? You're like, oh my God, I don't remember like this happened. And like now it sticks out to you more? Or certain oh yeah. I mean, there was definitely things that I, when we talked a lot in episode one about the making of the title sequence, because it's so mm. iconic. Everyone remembers the roller coaster. You mm. know, we're all at this like magic mountain um, amusement park, Six Flags. And I remember it very viscerally because it was the first two or three days on set. Um, so we didn't even know each other. We didn't really know our characters. We hadn't even really rehearsed yet. And yet now we're all pretending to be this like family in this theme park. And we have all these attitudes and like, it, it was just like so out of body in, in some ways. But there were things that I forgot about that I didn't know until we were recording that either were told to me like by my mom or, you know, we saw Rich Carell, who was one of our directors. He directed the pilot of Step by Step. He reminded us that we were not allowed to ride the roller coaster because it was a liability. Yeah. So instead, they had doubles riding the roller coaster. I do remember that because I was, I was definitely disappointed. But what I didn't remember was we all stood in the kitchen set of Step by Step. And we, as the kids, all recorded the screaming. So those are our voices. Wow. The, ah, going yeah. over the thing. But we did it in post. We did it in an ADR. And I didn't remember doing that. But then he said it. And I was like, wait, I think you're right. He's like, I know I'm right. I have a picture of it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, oh, my God, blow my mind, you know? Did so, you post that so picture funny. yet anywhere? I don't have it. He's going to give it to me, though, or he's uh, going to send it to me. Hopefully, we'll have him on the pod. Yeah. That's awesome. So, like, uh, with Step by Step, too, it also holds, like, a special place in everybody's heart. And, then you know, when they find out that it's available, I think it's available on Hulu for streaming too yeah like, well it was for a very long time now i know it's on max and okay, then we what... also just found out there's like a complete series dvd box set which i had no idea even existed i mean i know a lot of people don't have dvds anymore but um we were doing some autograph signings and a couple people had to sign them and i was shocked and amazed that those mm. actually exist so what do, you, what do you think about the show like still continues on like people still want to go back to watch it what do you think pulls them back into the 90s i mean i'm a huge 90s fan too we grew up in that era but like yeah. what do you think pulls us in there i think it's this sense there are some shows that stick out from that era and i i don't know if you can explain exactly what it is but it's almost like you see yourself in that friend group 
in that mm. family. It's like you see yourself as maybe a tangential member of the step-by-step family, or like you wish you were one of the friends, you know, or you like, you know, you feel like family matters that that whole family could have lived next door, you know? So I think there's something in there that just feels like home. It's like a safe place where okay. you don't have to, it, it's funny. It's, you know, there's a little bit of like, of, of, um, uh, attention or like a problem that has to get solved, but you know, at the end of the day, these people do love each other and they will figure it out. So it's kind of like comfort food in a way. And I feel like there aren't a lot of shows anymore where we can say that, where we can watch with our parents or watch with our yeah. elders or watch with our whole family and not feel like it's just a show for kids, you know? So I, I feel like it's just, it was another time in television. And I think that's why it just feels so good. You mentioned earlier about the the nineties and the clothes and everything. I was told to ask you, and I wrote it right here because I didn't want to forget. Like, uh, where did you guys get all these cool outfits from? That's what they want to know. And do you still have any of them? You mean that we wore on the show? Yeah. Oh well, we had costumers that did all of the costuming for us, and I don't think that we kept. This was like before actors were really keeping memorabilia and things. Right. And now I think an actor might ask for this or ask for that. And to be clear, like, I wasn't thinking at 12 years old, like, I've got to keep this backwards hat. Like, I just yeah. wasn't thinking like that. Now, I wish I had it. I wish I had those Air Force Ones I wore. I've been trying to find them. <laughs> um, but, you know, as we got older, I mean, there were things, I think, at the end of the series that I took, but I certainly, I certainly didn't keep them for nostalgia purposes. I wish I had now. But some of the outfits... Some of them I would maybe consider if I had them putting on again today, but I would say most of them are, are maybe not a look I would want to repeat. <laughs> right. So you mentioned earlier, you know, we had a, the Boy Meets World, which is Pop Meets World. And we had like a, the Full House podcast. And then we also had uh, Boy Meets World, did Girl Meets World. We had Fuller House from Full House. Had it been talks? Have you guys had talks about maybe trying to do like a, some kind of thing with Step by Step? I mean, there have been some rumblings about it. Um, mm. I think it's a little complicated because our show had a couple different uh, producers. It wasn't mm. just Warner Brothers and ABC. It was also this other entity called Lorimar. I won't get into it, but they don't exist anymore. Okay. So if if these characters were to come back, I think it would really take a showrunner who had a love of who they are and a real vision for what it could be um, and to get the blessing of the Miller Boyette family uh, to go forward and, you know, revisit these characters that they created in a brand new light. But do I think that there's room and space for it? Yeah. And I, I think that in the 90s, we talked a lot about step by step being that bridge to broken families and new yeah. kinds of families. You know, a lot of people didn't, there weren't a lot of TV shows that dealt with divorce. Um, where the kids, it wasn't the Brady Bunch. The kids didn't magically get along. We we were, you know, constantly trying to navigate uh, those relationships and to learn how to be a family and learn how to work together. And I think that's all too true today. People live in in commune with people who are their chosen families, and people make it work all kinds of ways. And we're not we're not new to the word divorce or yeah. separation or you know, any of that. And I think that that's, there are new avenues we could really explore in much the same way we did in the nineties. And I think people love these characters, you know? Oh yeah, exactly. You know, like when you start filming season two of the podcast, is there somebody that you can't wait to have on the show to talk season two and so on? Oh yeah. I'm real excited. You know, we just had this mini step-by-step -step reunion uh, with Patrick and Sasha um, and myself and Stacy. Um, we were doing a, a, a memorabilia show a weekend ago, and it was it was just so fun to be in the same room again. And certainly at 90s Con in a couple of weeks, it's going to be mm -hmm. most of us all together, um, obviously missing Suzanne in a great, great capacity. Um, but I think that, you know, Stacey and I both talked about, all right, well, if people like this and we want to do a season two, you know, we definitely have to ask people on, but I mean, I can't wait to have Patrick on. Yeah. I can't wait to have Rich Carell on. Like he remembers everything and he was there behind the scenes. Like he he'll know stuff that we weren't even privy to. Um, I can't wait to see Chris Castile. He and I were super close because we shared a schoolroom together for okay. many, many years. 
And I dare say we spent more time together in that, that freaking schoolroom than we did even on set. So um, we had a lot of inside jokes and I just, I haven't seen the guy in like 30 years. So I'm stoked. I can't wait to see Brandon call like same thing. Awesome. So yeah. You, you mentioned uh, Suzanne Summers. Uh, what's your favorite memory of her with, with the show and you? God, I have so many good memories. I have so many good memories. It's still, I still can't quite wrap my head around the loss. It's still like, it's still really hard. Um, you know, when I think about her and I just can't believe that she's not with us. It's just, she was such a bright light and was so positive and so beautiful and seemed like like larger than life in so many ways but yet when you would be around her she made you feel like you were the most important person in the room she was really gracious and really down to earth and and just self-deprecating and um she just leveled the playing field like you can be such a big star yeah. and you can be so glamorous and like a diva in your own right but you can also make everybody feel so loved and so taken care of. So, I mean, I have a lot of memories about her. Um, I, I will, I'll share one small one that, you know, this just meant a lot to me. Um, she, um, we always, Stacey and I, especially, we love to watch what Suzanne would wear because okay. we were young women and we just thought she was the most glamorous woman we'd ever met and always would be. And so whether she was wearing jeans and cowboy boots and turquoise jewelry, like, we were always like low key watching her. Mm -hmm. um, she, I had, this was the nineties. So Spice Girls were really big and I had these big chunky yeah. boots like the Spice Girls and I'd got them on Melrose Avenue and I thought that was so cool. And she was like, what are these shoes? And I said, uh, oh, and I, I was so like taken aback that she loved my shoes. Um, and so I told her and I told her where they were and she ended up getting them and we like had the same shoes and it just, I don't, I mean, I know it sounds really vapid and it sounds really meaningless, but to me, it was like such a compliment from somebody who I just so admired in so many ways. So really her glamour really, and her, I don't know, her openness just always stick with me. It's hmm, amazing. You mentioned uh, like um, the 90 con, 90s con. I've been there for the last two years since it first started here in the area. Um, have you heard anything about this, how crazy it gets? And I just yeah, kind of... I've heard some rumors. I've never been, but a couple of people were like, oh, get ready. Like, it's loud. It's a dance party. It's high energy. It's a lot of fun. So I'm excited. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be kind of like a high school reunion. I know a lot of the people going. So. Right. It <laughs> Might is, even be a few ex-boyfriends there. Who knows? <laughs> and what's great is that, like, people, like, from sh one show, sometimes always, like, post pictures with, people they haven't seen from other shows in a long time so yeah. it's yeah it's like a big huge reunion that's all you see all over social media those days oh for sure I mean it's like a social media dream you know getting to like see all your friends and and that you haven't seen them forever yeah it's, seriously it's like a high school reunion so many of us a lot of people don't know because we were on shows at the same time we a lot of us would end up at the same events even if we okay. weren't on the same network but we would go yeah. to like charity events and other things so a lot of us did know each other um, is, are you guys planning to do a Q and A, step by step? We are. Or? Yeah, okay. we're gonna do a, a step by step panel for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what's the one thing you're looking forward to for this con? I think just really getting the whole most of the cast back together. We haven't all done this before. Um, mm -hmm. We've never been really in the same room all together since the show ended. So that camaraderie and that joy, I mean, there really is sort of a shorthand. Like when you've been on a cast for that long with people. Yeah it doesn't really matter how much time goes by, you know, mm. there's a little bit of that like shorthand. It's like, it's like not, it's like having a best friend that you, you don't see for 20 years, but then you can pick up like kind of right yeah. where you left off. There's that really just comfortable feeling. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to, I think all of us, I think after Suzanne's passing, it was just really timely that this all in some weird way kind of came mm. up. And I think, you know, life is short life is short and it's unpredictable and I think the opportunity for us to get together while we're all here and while we all can I think is really important and it's you never are given that impetus of how important it is until you lose someone you care about 
Have you uh, talked to the other cast members like about doing this kind of like, you know, there's some of them are not even in the industry anymore. Somebody like Stacy, you mentioned, you know, she's now a lawyer and everything. Or even like, I think Christopher, isn't he a teacher or professor or something? Yeah, he's a professor. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you talked to them about doing something when they're now they're going to come and do something like this? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was actually really interesting how it came together because I was approached by Jason Marsden and he and I've been yeah. friendly over the years. He does a lot of different cons and he had sort of asked me if I'd ever be interested in doing them. And I was always like, yeah, sure. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started talking about it and I sort of spoke to somebody that he works with. And then um, I think because Stacey and I were getting this, this uh, podcast together, I said to her, you know, it might, if we can go to this, it might be really wise because I think yeah. we'll be able to promote the podcast and get people out there. So then it was me, Stacey and Jason. And then the promoter came to me and said, hey, we're trying to find a couple people, but we're having trouble. And I said, well, I, I have an old email for Chris. Like we spoke a couple years ago. I could certainly try. I don't know if he's into it. So I kind of wrote an email there. Kind of the same thing with Patrick. They had sort of tried through the, the all the various channels. But of course, I, I, he and I speak. So I told him that like we were going and would he be interested? And especially yeah. since, you know, everything that had happened in, in the fall, like, it just might be a really, uh, just a really great time to see each other. And strangely enough, it's over his birthday. So like what better yeah, time to celebrate with him? Um, so he said yes. And then I guess Chris said yes. So suddenly it just all started to like come together. And then um, they asked uh, if I could reach out to Brandon Call. And I, I just had lost touch. I just didn't have any way to contact him. And I just didn't think he would be interested. And mm -hmm. I told them that and I said, I could, you know, I'll ask his mom. I'll just let her know. And, you know, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Yeah. And then the next thing I heard, they had spoken to him and he was, he was sort of the last one to say yes. So That's it kind awesome. of just all, it was like a, it was like a, yeah, a bunch of dominoes. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and what's a good way to promote it there too, is I noticed that uh, the boy, boy meets world uh, area had a, uh, Will had um cards of the podcast with the bar, uh, the scanner thing, so you could scan and get the podcast. So you might want to print those out and bring those. So when people you're get so, to your table, they grab them. You're so smart. I already did it. Yeah, there you go. See. Yeah. So <laughs> when you're there, you got to pick one up from us. That's right. That's sure. right. <laughs> uh, what now? Uh, what's next for you now? Any other projects you got coming out or working behind the scenes that you could tell us about? Yeah. Um, I have a couple things in the works. I mean. You know, the industry is slowly grinding the gears, um, yeah. but it looks like it's going to be a pretty busy spring. Um, I'm directing a short um, for uh, in in conjunction with Fujifilm, which I'm really excited about. Um, and I've got a, got a couple choreography things sort of percolating. Um, I have a script I'm working on with a friend that we're going out to pitch. So that's kind of all like my behind the scenes stuff. And then a um, bunch of audiobooks lined up. You know, I do a lot of voiceover. And so yeah. you can hear, my, you can constantly hear my voice. <laughs> Hopefully awesome. I'm not putting people to sleep these days. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Christina, how can the listeners now, the viewers that tune in and find you on social media, keep up with you with everything? And of course, all your pictures that you've been posting lately. Yeah, of course. Uh, on Instagram, I'm Yo Lakin. I'm at Yo Lakin. And on um, Facebook, I'm Christine Lakin Verified. Amazing. Christina, I want to thank you for giving me a few minutes and we got to do it again sooner, not two years. Please. Yes. Great to see you as always. So.